Hi there. Welcome to Tracking Student Performance in the Blackboard Retention Center. My name is Stephanie Richter. I'm the Assistant Director with the Faculty Development and Instructional Design Center at Northern Illinois University. And I have my contact information for you here on the slide. I will also have that again at the end so you can refer to it and write it all down then. <laughs> in today's session, I have four main areas that that we'll cover. We'll look at the retention center in general, at the, the overall structure. And then we'll talk about how the retention center actually tracks students and what, what performance indicators it uses. We'll look at how you can use the retention center to track student performance. And we'll look at how you can notify students about performance issues with the retention center. But first, I want to talk about retention as a construct, because I think it's important to consider the, the why, the teaching side of why you would use the retention center. It's not just about data. It's really importantly about our interactions with students. So my bold claims about retention, because I'm not substantiating these, I'm just claiming them. And I think they're pretty irrefutable in today's climate, particularly here at NIU. The first one is that student retention is important. There are a variety of reasons why um, this claim is true, from a uh, social responsibility, from finances, from the serving the mission of the university. There are a number of reasons why retention is important. But overall, I think it's fair to say that student retention is important. I also want to acknowledge, though, that there are many factors that affect retention. And quite often, it's a combination of factors. It's no one single factor that has the greatest impact on students. It can be academic within a particular course, across courses. Um, it could also be non-academic issues related to uh, student services, social life, uh, family life outside of the university, um, and certainly financial factors play a, a, a big role. So doing something like tracking how well your students are doing in Blackboard is not going to solve all retention issues. But this ties into my third bold claim, which is that retention is ultimately everyone's responsibility. And so it's through programs like this one that faculty development is taking responsibility for our piece of student retention. And ultimately, using the retention center is one way that you can make retention your responsibility. Um, the corollary to this is while we'll talk today about how the Blackboard Retention Center can help with retention, it's important to remember that while technology can help, it really needs a personal touch to be most effective. When you look at the, the literature and the research on retention, the most important factors are for a student to stay on campus are about feeling connected to faculty, to fellow students, to the, the campus and the community, and ultimately feeling like they are valued and cared about, that we have a stake in their success and we want them to succeed. So from that perspective, using the Retention Center is one tool that you have in order to help students feel connected and show that you are paying attention to their success. If you're interested in tips for student retention in particular, uh, we have a post we made in our newsletter in the spring of 2014 called Tips for Teaching for Student Retention. Um, you can go to factdevblog.niu.edu slash teaching for student retention to get more information. But today, we're going to focus on the Retention Center in particular. Before we start that, I want to point out that all of this and more information, in fact, is available on our website at niu.edu slash blackboard. And the Retention Center, in particular, is under Assessing Learners, so slash assess slash Retention Center. You can either put that directly into your browser, or you can navigate through the site to get there. 
But everything we'll cover today, plus a little bit more detail, is available there. The first thing you should know about the Retention Center is how to get there, right? That seems like an important piece of information. So the Retention Center has multiple paths for you to get to it. The first one, and probably the easiest one, is actually from the Global Navigation menu. So when you log into Blackboard, there's a menu at the very top with your name on it. If you haven't been aware that this is a menu, it's a huge time saver in terms of helping you navigate through Blackboard. So here, if you open the, uh, the Global Navigation menu, then you get, uh, there's an icon in the left that has two arrows, one up and one down, and might or might not have a small number in red next to it. This is a quick link to the retention center in the um, My Blackboard portal, I guess I would call it, that aggregates information across all of your courses. So if you click this link, then you'll go to a page that lists all of the courses and the number of students in each course who may be at risk. So in this case, there are four courses that have students that might be at risk. You can also get to the retention center from within a particular course. Once you're in your course, if you scroll down to the control panel, click on evaluation, and then click retention center. Uh, that will show you the, uh, take you directly to the retention center for that course. And here's the retention center. So in this view, I've actually kind of cut off the course menu and the banner across the top. You would normally see those um, navigation elements of Blackboard. But for now, this will let us look directly at the content. So the, um, the retention center has a number of components that you should pay attention to. The first is this toolbar at the top under the heading students currently at risk. At the right, it will tell you how many students there are who are currently at risk. You can also click on that bar and it will break down the, uh, the number of students by which rules they're currently um, considered at risk under. So for example here, I have 16 students who missed deadlines, 9 students who have grade alerts, 47 students with activity alerts, and 13 with access alerts. Below that is the uh, activity table. This table will tell you all of the students that are in the course and if they have triggered any particular retention alerts. These four at the top are, have a different colored background because they are considered most, most at risk right now because they've triggered four alerts, all four of them. So this list is sorted first by alert level and second alphabetically. And so below the four who are most at risk, the rest of the students are listed alphabetically, uh, again, based on their, their risk level. We'll talk more about the, the pieces to the right in a moment. If we scroll the rest of the way down the page first, I also want to point out this section called Your Course Activity. What this does, it's not really, uh, it doesn't really alert anyone but you. If you check the Retention Center and view your course activity, this aggregates your contribution to the course. So for example, here I can see that I have assignments that still need to be graded. These are, uh, it's a, a significant and important opportunity for me to give feedback to students that I have not done so. Um, so highlighting that here lets me see that I haven't gotten back to students on those yet. It also will highlight any interaction that I've made on the various uh, collaboration tools. So I can see, for example, I haven't posted to the discussion board. That would probably be important if I'm using the discussion board as a community building tool in my course. To see here that I haven't done it at all is a huge flaw. Uh, uh, 
again, based on the way that I'm using it. If I'm not using it at all, the zero means nothing. But it's important to take that in context. I can also see that I have not posted an announcement. I should probably do that soon. If you have, it will tell you when, give you a truncated view of the announcement text and when that was posted. And will also tell me, in terms of course design, how I've been contributing to students. So I can see that I posted content a little bit over a week ago. Um, that could be soon enough. If I loaded all of my content at the beginning of the semester, then I might be OK. At the same time, if I've been giving students content a little bit at a time, a week might be too long. This section at the bottom on your course activity, as I said, is only visible to you. So it's really designed to give you the opportunity to think more about um, your activity in the course and your behaviors and how you are connecting or not connecting to students. There are, you may have noticed on that screenshot, four different factors that Blackboard tracks when they're looking at uh, student risk. They're not necessarily the most obvious rules, so let me explain what those four rules are. Uh, the four categories are missed deadlines, grade, activity, and access. The first one, missed deadline, will give you an alert if the student has missed one or more due dates on any type of assessment in the course. This works for, as I said, basically any assessment that has a due date, like tests, assignments, safe assignments, blog posts, journals, and discussion forums. In order for this to work, you have to establish the due date within the assessment. So for example, when you set up an assignment, there's a checkbox and a date option for you to set a due date. If you've done that, then Blackboard can track which students have turned it in before the due date, who missed the deadline, and it will flag late submissions for you when you're grading them. So this gives you uh, a better way to help you track your students' uh, submissions. It also, if you want another reason to use due dates, due dates automatically show up on the Blackboard course calendar. So when you post a due date for an assignment, then it goes on to this big calendar for all of the students in the course. And it makes it easier for them to start tracking due dates. The final reason to use due dates, if you aren't, is that Blackboard also sends out a notification to students when they miss the deadline. So if the due date is today and a student doesn't post, tomorrow they'll get an email notification letting them know that they missed the due date for that assignment. The one caveat to using due dates is do not put a due date on a manually created grade column. This does not apply if you've created an assignment. When it creates a, a column in the Grade Center, it will automatically have a due date. That's fine. But if you create a column yourself by going to the Grade Center, don't use a due date there. Because the only way that Blackboard can track whether or not students miss that due date is based on when you enter the grades. So if the due date is today at 6 and students turn in their papers in class at 6 o'clock, then every student who turns in the paper has turned it in on time. However, if you don't grade those, certainly not when they turn them in, you'll grade them over the next few days. When you do, Blackboard will treat that as though the student missed the deadline. And then all of your students will be marked, and they'll get an email that they missed a deadline. So the, the two sides of this are that due dates are really helpful in terms of tracking whether or not students have been keeping up with your course. They're also a really valid communication tool. However, you want to use them on Blackboard assessments, not on manual columns. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions on that. You can also set a due date on the manual column and then take it off later. Um, that's a nice compromise to make that work. But uh, otherwise, it will cause, <laughs> cause you to wonder why all of your students have missed a deadline when they really haven't. The grade criteria will give you an alert if the students, if a particular student's grade is 25% or more below the class average. 
So if the class average is a 95, then any student with a 70% or below will have a grade alert. This is based on the external grade column in the Grade Center. This is the column that has a green check mark next to the column name. By default in your course, it's the total column. However, if you're using a, a weighted grading column, then you may want to move, in fact you should, move that external grade check mark to the weighted total column. So that Blackboard is comparing grades based on the correct um, measure, I would say. The activity rule is probably the most difficult to understand. It's the least intuitive. The activity rule will alert you if a student's activity for the past week, seven days, is 20% or more below the class average for activity. Activity is actually based on the amount of time a student spends in your Blackboard course, from the time they log in to the time they log out. This is a dubious measure at best, um, depending on the level of activity you expect students to um, spend in your course. For example, if your course is primarily there for some documents for students to retrieve, they won't spend a lot of time, and they don't need to spend a lot of time in your course. However, if your Blackboard course is really designed to be a highly interactive online course where students are reading material, watching videos, posting to discussion boards, and having conversations with each other, then this activity level would be a fairly good indicator of how, um, how much effort the student is putting into the course. So essentially what Blackboard will do is it tracks every time a student logs in, and then it will subtract when students leave and use that amount of time as their activity within your course. It's important to note that if a student logs into your course and then is logged out due to inactivity because they just forget to log out, then the time that Blackboard records is actually the last time that they clicked anything within your course. So a student can't trick this by logging in and then just leaving it logged in forever. Um, but as I said, it's not a great rule but it can give you some sense of who's participating uh, and who maybe is not. And then the fourth rule is really straightforward. This is just whether or not a student has accessed your course. So if the student has logged into Blackboard, clicked on your course, then that's considered accessing the course. If the student hasn't logged in in five days, then Blackboard will um, give you this alert. So it is specific to a single course, not overall in Blackboard. So if a student logs in and goes to a different course, then they haven't accessed your course. It's only if they come into your Blackboard course. And this access rule is actually refreshed once a day, which is important to note because all four rules together are not. Um, I'll talk about that in a second. So just to summarize then, the four rules are whether or not students have missed deadlines in your course, if their grade is 25% or more below the class average, if their activity in the course is 20% below the class average, or if they have not accessed your Blackboard course for five or more days. I talked about the, the, the data refresh, so the um, data on student access is refreshed once a day. The other rules are refreshed when you access the retention center. So in other words, Blackboard isn't thinking about these in the background all the time. They will refresh that information when you go to the retention center to look for it. Before I move on, are there any questions on any of those rules? Using the, the check mark above your names, give me a, an X to let me know that you don't have any questions. Excellent. Thank you guys very much. 
So tracking student performance is an active uh, task for you. It's not something that you can just sit and wait for um, <laughs> the information to come to you. So you will have to take some initiative to go and actually view the, um, the results. When you log into the Retention Center, we already looked at that overall view, and each red dot means that the student is at risk under that alert rule. If you click on the dot, so if I clicked here for Bill Gates on the missed deadline, then I get a pop-up that will actually tell me more information about that. So I can see that he has one deadline that he missed. Uh, and I could click View Late Submissions to go and see exactly which uh, due dates he has missed. If I click on the Grade Alert indicator, then it will tell me what his grade is. His grade is 57.5, which is 31% lower than the class average. So his grade is more than 25% below the class average, and that uh, generated this alert. If I click on Activity Alert, then the pop-up will tell me how, how much below the average his activity is. In this case, he actually has no activity in the course. So that is well below the class average of some activity, I would imagine. So his is none and well below the average. An important thing to note about the activity that I didn't uh, clarify is that this is for the last week on a sliding scale. So if I go to this today, then it's the activity from the last week in the course, not the cumulative activity for the entire course. And then finally, if I click on the dot for access alert, this will again tell me when the student last logged into the course. In this case, his last access is also never, which tells me that, again, he has not logged in. He has not been participating. It's really not surprising, therefore, that he missed a deadline in the course. He didn't turn in his homework because he didn't access the course. But if they had, this would give me the specific date that the student had last logged into Blackboard and accessed my course. You can also, let me back up a slide again, you can also click on the student's name. So it's not obvious in the screenshot, but here Bill Gates is actually a link. And if I click on his name, that will take me to the student's retention status page. This is sort of a summary for that student of the, all four of the risk factor rules and where that student stands relative to those. So I can see here the missed deadline, grade alert, activity alert, and access alert rules. And I can see the details for each one for him rather than clicking across the entire table. There are also a number of other tasks that you can do from this page that we'll look at uh, in a little bit. One thing that you can do to bring students who might be particularly at risk to your attention um, is to monitor them. So again, if I go back to the student summary page, there's a star here for monitor. I can click that star, or if I go back a little bit further yet, you can actually click the star to monitor a student from any of these uh, risk factor detail summaries. So when I look to see which deadline, I can choose to monitor the student from there. Monitoring a student lets you um, view all of their details in this sort of quick summary view. So I can see for Louisa Alcott, who is not currently at risk, by the way, that her last access was 17 hours ago. Her activity is 102% above the class average. Her grade is 1.2% below average, but that's really not very low. And she missed a, has missed none of the deadlines. I can also see Leonardo da Vinci's because I'm monitoring him as well. 
So when you have a student either um, who you think might need a little bit more monitoring, um, maybe based on your past experience with the student, or when you have a student in your course now who you notice is following, falling behind, you can choose to monitor that student so that when you log into the retention center, you can see their details immediately. Below the students you are monitoring, there is a section for other information you are monitoring. If you customize the retention center, and you would do that using the gray button here at the top of the screen for customize, if you customize the rules, you can create new rules to monitor more details. Now, those four rules still have to be within um, this framework. So you only have those four options of missed deadlines, grades, activity, or access. And we don't recommend that you modify the existing four rules that uh, generate this table. However, you can create additional rules that don't go into the table that will show up down here to the right. We recommend using this for tracking some positive tasks instead of focusing on negatives. So if you wanted to track and identify which students have grades that are above the class average or which students' activities are above average, you can do that here in this other information you're monitoring to bring that to your attention as well. So it doesn't have to only be about negatives. You can also track to the positive as well. Are there any questions? about the, um, the retention center rules or how you view student progress through the retention center? Ah, it looks like no, that's great. So we'll move right along to looking at how you notify students about their performance. You can, of course, do this in many ways. It doesn't have to be through the retention center. You may want to notify students by uh, talking to them after class, asking them to come to your office hours, or uh, sending them email even through Blackboard or through MyNIU. As long as the approach that you take to students is private and secure, meaning that it isn't um, you, you don't do it in front of other students, and you don't do it in a way that other students know, you can choose how you want to approach students to discuss their class performance. It can be a difficult conversation, uh, so you have to be, be, be careful, open, and focused on their success in the way that you do that. But again, the retention center has some benefits if you want to use it for notifying students, even just to start the conversation, uh, if you want to then move it to, a, to more face-to-face. -face. So here we have, the again, the view of the retention center. But I want to point out um, a feature we didn't discuss before. Hmm. Here on the risk table, when I'm looking at one particular factor, so right now I'm looking at the details on Bill Gates' missed deadline. There's actually, down here at the bottom, a notify option. If you click the notify, then you get a drop down where you can notify students, their observers, or students and observers. Right now, we don't have observers enabled in the, the system. There's a tool in Blackboard that would let um, let uh, the system administrators, let IT, essentially pair students with someone who has permission to monitor their, their grades and their performance in courses. Uh, in the K-12 setting, they actually use this a lot to pair students with their parents, so parents can log into the course uh, and see what materials are there, see what the students' grades are looking like, um, and do that all from home. At the university, we don't usually do that for parents, but we could do it for counselors or um, others who are, again, monitoring and advising the students as they go through their experience. So we're looking into how we could actually do that and 
make it um, useful here for NIU students. Most of the time, though, you will simply want to notify the students. So you would click Notify and then Students. That isn't the only way to get to the notifications, however. If you look at a student summary page by clicking on their name, then again, you get a notified dropdown where you can notify, again, the students, the observers, or the students and the observers. If you choose to do that, so let's imagine that I clicked on students. Then it essentially looks like an email <laughs> page, to be honest. It will tell you who the email is going to. You can add additional recipients as blind copies. If this were um, a student in your department who you, you knew was really struggling and you wanted to draw attention to that to someone else, or as a graduate assistant, if you were a teaching assistant and you're notifying a student about uh, a potential problem, you might want to blind copy the faculty member who's supervising you, the, the professor. That lets you share this beyond just a single student. Of course, you have to be careful. You're not going to BC another student in the course. You don't want to blind copy your friends, um, <laughs> anyone who doesn't need to know about the student's performance issue but you can help to make others aware of it. And then the notification actually comes with some default text. I don't recommend using the default text because it's very, um, very mechanical. I would recommend changing the subject so that it has maybe your course and a brief comment about you know, missed deadline or um, concerned about your progress, whatever your hook is into how you're contacting that student. And then in your message, you would write out more information about what, you, um, what you're trying to get across to the student. This email notification, if you notice at the bottom, will send a copy to the sender. So when you send this, you will get a copy in your own email that is one way you can prove that this was sent. The other thing that's nice about emailing, notifying students through the retention center is that Blackboard actually retains a copy of that here in the notification history. So once you have um, sent that notification, it retains a record here of by date and time and including the text of that notification. So unlike sending an email in Blackboard, which only uh, gets sent through Blackboard, it doesn't actually get retained in Blackboard, sending a notification through the retention center does get retained. Uh, so instead of only having the email that you receive as a copy as a record, there's also a copy here in Blackboard. Then there's another feature here to the um, retention status page. In addition to being able to notify students, you can also make notes to yourself. So if you click this add a note link to the right, that opens an area where you can create a note. Again, simply type in the text, then click the save button. And this note, then, is held privately within the retention center. So it's not sent to students, but it's saved here for you and anyone else who is an instructor or a teaching assistant in the course. That way, everyone else knows and you have a record of whatever else may have been important about your interaction with the student. So for example here, I saved a note that Bill provided some documentation of illness, and I will excuse the late submission if he turns it in by a new deadline on the 17th. You can use the note in order to um, make a note that maybe you contacted, you gave the student a phone call, or you talked to the student after class and let them know you were concerned and asked them to, asked them to come to office hours. 
So using notes is a convenient way for you to record other activities related to retention that don't happen through this notification. That way you're not only sending students emails, but then you can record the results of those. Maybe he came into office hours and I wanted to record a brief note about our discussion. This gives you, again, more, uh, a, a better record of what you have done on behalf of the student. And in the event of a grade appeal, for example, could come in handy, could be useful in terms of, of showing what you did and how you and the students worked together and what agreements that you came to. Uh, are there any questions on either sending notifications or making notes like this? Looks like no. All right. For more information on the Retention Center, you can go to our website again to view um, the, we have a tutorial on the Retention Center as well as quick guides on using the Retention Center that you can use just to refresh your memory on what we've discussed today. I mentioned at the beginning that we have a blog post. It was part of our newsletter on tips for teaching for student retention. This will cover not just the Blackboard side, but really what you can do when you are teaching or working with students even outside of a classroom. Just some best practices for helping your students get to know you better, get to know one another, and feel like they are valued and that you are concerned about their success. I highly recommend it as um, a tool for you to learn more about student retention and working with students. I also recently held an online workshop like this one called Tips for Improving Student Retention with Blackboard. To be honest, we did talk about the Retention Center, but the Retention Center is really only one tool that you have available. There are a number of strategies and other tools in Blackboard that you can use to contribute to a sense of community, connectedness, and um, to help you and students both monitor their progress. If you want to view that archive, it is on our website at factdev.niu.edu. Um, you can go to the, the archives to view that. Or if you go to factdev.niu.edu slash retention tips, that will take you directly to this archive on, the, on our YouTube channel, along with the playlist of all of the other workshops we've done like this and archived. So again, it's another resource for you about student retention, as well as a portal to all of the wealth of resources that we have available to you. Uh, I highly recommend this link here at the bottom. Again, I appreciate that all of you attended today and took time from your busy schedule. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Uh, my email and my Twitter account are both here, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.